the community. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm Marcus, and I am the uh, community outreach coordinator for Habitat for Humanity of Bullitt County. Uh, and I am also the advocacy coordinator for Habitat. Um, really, the advocacy hat is one of my biggest. It's, uh, and we've been active in advocacy ever since I started with Habitat in 2014. We kind of fell into it accidentally, but uh, it was at that time when Habitat International had a uh, review of its mission and vision and decided that Habitat's vision has always been to a world where everyone had a decent place to live. And I'm actually gonna take this off. Everyone's kind of towards the back of the room. So I, I think there's plenty of social distancing uh, and it will be easier for me to talk. Um, but anyway, uh, but the realization is that you can't get to a place where everyone has a decent place to live uh, building houses at the number, at the kind of numbers that a private nonprofit organization can build. So really, if we're going to make uh, headway on our vision, Habitat has to do things differently. And so one of the things they decided is that one of the things Habitat's going to go into is advocacy, very intentionally and purposefully to bring about societal change for the sake of uh, more housing, more affordable housing, but uh, and and also changing societal expectations so that people will acquire housing that is affordable to them, so that then they can use their resources for other things besides just all of it going to housing. Um, in 2014, after I started with Habitat, I got an I and uh, Linda Christie, our executive director at the time, got invited to one of the early meetings of the Blue Mile Committee, uh, which was this organization that was beginning the process of trying to begin uh, economic revitalization of the corridor, the Highway 301 corridor between um, the courthouse and Georgia Southern. And when we got involved with that, one of the first things we started doing is saying, listen, you aren't going to get a lot of headway with revitalizing the downtown district without revitalizing some of the housing that's around the downtown district and without uh, neighborhood revitalization. So at that time, Habitat's first step into societal change was to really focus on neighborhood revitalization. And so we kind of uh, nudged the uh, Blue Mile Committee to actually bring that into uh, their focus. Then as we got traction with that, then came the issue of saying, now when we say neighborhood revitalization, we don't mean neighborhood gentrification. It does no good to push people out uh, and just make the housing problem worse, but somewhere else. Uh, the, the issue is to, to build the neighborhood up, bring some infill, you know, bring some life to the neighborhood, uh, improve the housing in the neighborhood, but at the same time, continue, continue having the same people and the same sort of people living in the neighborhood. Um, all that kind of proceed, proceeded on until uh, there were some political changes in Statesboro and, and we got some real traction with our efforts then. And then on, on top of all that, Habitat International launched its five-year advocacy program called Cost of Home. Now, Cost of Home has uh, a few priorities, four priorities. Uh, one priority is increasing the inventory and preserving the inventory of affordable housing. That's priority number one. This priority number two is equity and land use, so that so that properties and land will be set aside for low-income people, space to build low-income housing on. The third priority is, uh, is equal access to credit. Um, one of the invisible barriers is not just, uh, say, people having uh, inequitable credit based on race, but also inequitable credit 
based on how you measure credit. Because a lot of low income people who are financially responsible, uh, the way they stay financially responsible is that they never borrow any money. So they have no credit rating. And so then they have no access to a mortgage. Um, and so equal access to credit becomes a big deal so of, of trying to convince the banking industry to look at other things besides just what they have done with, the, with uh, mortgages, look at how they pay their other bills. The, the final one is making sure that low income communities are communities of opportunity. So one of the things you'll notice that Habitat does, we, we, we are very active with Blue Mile revitalization. We seek to influence it. We seek to promote it. Uh, why do we do this? Because the Blue Mile is the, is the commercial district that's the closest to most of the low income neighborhoods. So we want the, uh, uh, the Blue Mile district to prosper because if it does, it makes those neighborhoods communities of opportunity. And so, so at the local level, this is kind of the, the general direction of our advocacy effort. Uh, more recently, uh, one of, you know, because of changes at Statesboro, Statesboro has really begun to focus on housing and focus on revitalization. I don't know that Statesboro would be doing that had it not been for uh, some of the pressure that Habitat has been putting on uh, community leaders and on business uh, community to do something about the housing situation in Statesboro since 2014. But now that we're in this process, we're also trying to influence the process. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing or will be doing over the next few months is trying to help folks at the administration building at the city do a better job at communicating with uh, folks who are uh, home builders. Um, you know, the city has uh, enacted some programs to try to stimulate um, investment in the low income neighborhoods, private investment in the lower income neighborhoods. And, you know, at the last uh, meeting that we went, that I went to, housing meeting I went to, there was some frustration on the part of the city folks uh, about how there really has, you know, it really hasn't gotten traction with that, that they really aren't getting a response from developers. And, uh, and my question was, well, what have you done to let developers know that there's this opportunity? And the answer is we had a community meeting. Okay, you had a community meeting during the time of COVID. There was 10 people there. Have you reached out to the homeowners, uh, home builders association? Um, try some marketing. Uh, reach out to the home builders, make sure that they know what's there. And then also thinking through some of the questions, talk to them, find out what, okay, you, you have these things are supposed to attract it. If it's not working, let's talk to the home builders and find out what are some of the things we could do that would attract them, that would make it worthwhile. One of the challenges we come, we're coming up against is uh, one thing, uh, the home builders are maxed out. They're building more houses. They're, they're, there are more houses to build than they can build. So if, they're, if we're gonna get them to invest in this, they have to have a reason to. Number two, um, they have to know about it and we have to know what is it that would, what is holding them back? And that, and that involves conversations uh, with folks. So, so, so part of our, my role at this point is really matchmaking. Now, question is, what can you do in terms of housing advocacy? One is, you can talk to me. I'm, you know, I'm at all kinds of uh, public events and we can discuss specific things that's going on. We can, talk, we can talk about things that's going on in housing in a way that you can plug in and, and get your voice heard. Habitat International at the federal level is gonna have an op opportunity on uh, February 8th through 10th. Every year, Habitat International has an advocacy, uh, a, uh, it's, it's a lobbying event uh, in Washington, D.C., 
uh, where you get to lobby your congressmen, your senators, and any other Congress people or senators that you might have some sort of connection with for whatever reason. And uh, it's 8th through 10th. Uh, last year, it was all virtual. This year, the plan is for it to be partly virtual and partly in person so that you can log in and be part of the advocacy process virtually, but you can also go with us to Washington, D.C. and advocate in, in person as well. Of course, all these things are dependent upon what happens with COVID between now and February. But, uh, but that is the plan as is going. Uh, that's it's called Habitat on the Hill. You can, you can, uh, you can go to Habitat International uh, webpage, habitat.com, and you can get information about it. And uh, I don't think you can register now. Uh, I think they're still kind of waiting to find out what COVID's going to do. But, uh, but that will open up soon, or at least they will come, they'll be rolling out their program in the next month or two, I expect. Uh, that's one thing you can do. There will, be, uh, there will probably be an advocacy COVID re uh, uh, permitting at the state level as well. That usually also happens in February. But you can talk to me anytime about things you can do in terms of advocacy. If you have time, I suggest you come to city council and county commission meetings and just learn what's going on. Uh, you're, you'll be amazed at what you can learn at just going through a few, to, few of those and you find out what's going on in the community and you find out that there are all, thing, all sorts of things that you can voice your thoughts on that will help uh, push uh, society forward and push society in the direction of making home more affordable. And um, whether it's in terms of encouraging policies that will improve the inventory of housing, whether it's encouraging pro uh, policies that make land more available or that make credit more available, or if it's simply uh, trying to uh, encourage the kind of economic development that would make jobs and uh, funds, make neighborhoods and low-income low neighborhoods communities of opportunity. And so I, uh, I will leave you with that, and I do appreciate it.